Hey, what's up? Good morning, Joan Vegas here. A Memorial Day review. Uh, I went to go see, believe it or not, Limp Biscuit last night. I'm a 46-year-old dude. And when I was just around my 20s, uh, in my 20s, Limp Biscuit was massive. I think they had, I feel like they had one or two years that they just owned the world. They were just the biggest band. The style of music was, was really hot back then. It was like this new metal. Uh, it was like when rap and, and rock were fusing together. Um, I think it came out with Faith first, the George Michael cover. That was just massive. Uh, and it's good, well deserved. It, it, it was great. It was really something different. It was uh, no one said anything. No, no one had really. I don't think heard anything like that until then. Or if, like if they did, it was just starting to break. And um, you know, Fred Durst was a character. He was a good-looking guy. He was. Uh, he looked like the average dude you'd see at a at a barbecue somewhere. Um, you know, he had a style to him, he had a backward hat, and because of that, he was, like, rumored to be with Britney Spears and all these celebrities, and he just had his, you know, sometimes these stars are just as big as their music, and, and Fred Durst was that. And then something happened, and I don't know what, I don't remember exactly what, when, where, how, but somewhere they became a little bit of a joke, That's this is my opinion, but I, I, I feel like that's what happened with them, where they just became, like, a poser band, or a I don't know, something where they fell from grace pretty fast. And uh, they kind of went away and they got this kind of stigma that, you know, they kind of roll your eyes out. It's a limp biscuit. And there, there's bands like that through history. Off, off the top of my head, a winger from the 80s was like that. And I don't remember how it happens. I think Winger had a thing on like Beavis and Butthead, but it happens to some bands. And they, it's not right and it's not fair, but you can't fucking control it. It's just the way it works out. I think Winger's an excellent band, but they kind of get laughed at, uh, probably because of the lead singer. But Kip Winger was such a like good-looking guy. He's like a Fabio model with his tank top hanging off his shoulder. And I think it was a little bit the same with Fred Durst. Actually, now that it's coming to me, I wonder, I think Woodstock maybe had something to do with it. I think they were the band that, like, people pegged as the idiots in Woodstock who were telling everyone to burn the fucking place down. That might have been where it started, now that I'm thinking about it. Probably was. I think after that, people were like, you know, fuck these guys. So, but that being said, their music has held up over the years. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't run home and throw on a Limp Bizkit t-shirt and listen to Limp Bizkit in my room, but... Uh, it definitely still on airwaves and still on the radio, and when you hear it, you're like, fuck. Especially, like, break stuff. Like, dude, this is a fucking good song. Um, he kind of disappeared a little bit, and then in the last year, I think there was a little bit of resurgence. I, I don't know if they were touring. I think they were doing more festival circuits and popping up here and there, but uh, in the last year, I think they played Coachella. I think that's what it was, in, in Chicago, maybe? And he showed up with this new album called Dad Vibes, and he was wearing this wig and this mustache, and he developed a kind of a new persona, which was probably smart, because it broke him out of, you know, what's he going to be, a 45-year-old guy coming out with his red hat backwards and t-shirt. So he kind of developed this thing called Dad Vibes, which was the name of the album, and uh, they launched a tour. And I can tell you, when we walked into, this was at the uh, Hard Rock or Virgin, at the, at the joint, which is called the theater now, it was packed. That place was packed. We looked at. I looked at the person I was with. I said, "God, look at look at this. This is twenty five years old. This is Limp Biscuit. They're packing in places still. So, good on them, man. Good on them. And you know what? You're not gonna believe this, but they deserved it. It was a hell of a show. I thought it was a great, great show. Both of us were blown away. We just didn't expect that. I didn't expect it to be that good, and I didn't expect the crowd to be that into it. And that's a testament to, to good music, man. If the music is good and whatever happens with the band over time, that shit goes away, but the music stays and the music is forever. So I'm going to go through the set list real quickly. Uh, he starts off in a recliner wearing that, that wig and the fucking mustache and the overalls or, or a work, work, what's it called? Jumpsuit? Work, work suit? I don't know what it's called. Anyway, uh, he's just sitting there like an old man in a chair. And then uh, they start with the song Dad Vibes, then Dirty Rotten Biscuit, and then they roll into their first song, ironically enough. Uh, Rollin', which was one of their big hits. Keep rolling, rolling. And then Hot Dog, and then another big hit, My Way and Highway, uh, that did My Generation, which was great. Living It Up, Eat You Alive, Rearranged, which I completely forgot about that song. I like that song. It's a cool song. Again, these songs, if you go back and listen to them, these are 25 years old, probably. 20, 25. They, they hold up. Rearranged is a cool song. Boiler, and then Nookie, which... 
they, they they mixed it up with something at the end of Nookie. I don't know what what that was. I don't know if that was the next song, Full Nelson. It wasn't like the straight uh, radio version of Nookie, but Nookie's Nookie. Nookie also is kind of a cool song. I don't know. You put it on just you know when you're done listening to this review, go go put on Nookie. It's like a fucking good song. That's the song everyone kind of rolls their eyes. Oh, I did it. You know, did it for the Nookie. You know, shove it up your ass. But at the end of the day, Nookie's a good song. Full Nelson. He did a cover of In Excess Don't Change. He did Faith, which I think is excellent. I love that Faith cover. He did a small little uh, thing of Heart Shaped Box by Nirvana, which I didn't see coming. That was kind of cool. He sounded good on it. Don't Look Around, and then the fake encore, and then he came out with uh, Break Stuff, which I think is by far their best song. Break Stuff is a is a song you work out to, you run to. It's a song when you're pissed off at everybody, and you're just driving, and you crank it, and you fucking go 20 miles faster than you normally go. It it does it to you, and it's it's held up excellent. Um, funny side note, just because I like him, Pauly Shore was around. I think he was in that break stuff video. He uh, I know he's a local now. I'm starting to see him all over the place. Uh, he's a good guy, but he uh, he announced them in uh, the beginning, coming on stage, and then uh, at the end for break stuff, it's like this crazy. He calls everybody on stage. He calls Pauly on stage. He calls the opening acts on stage. Everybody who was hanging out backstage in the green room and whatever, and probably a couple fans probably made their way up there. So this, so the finale is like the band on stage. You know, Fred and Wes and everybody. Wes, by the way, looked awesome. He was in this whole. I'll have some pictures. You'll see. He's in this whole fucking thing. He's always been like that, and he he he's still doing it all these years later, which is cool. Uh, it takes effort to do that. But the, for break stuff, it was like this: fifty people on stage, just chaotic. Uh, they turned the house lights on for the crowd. There was a big mosh pit going, um, and it worked. I don't know if the whole fucking thing worked, start to finish. I. On a scale of 1 to 10, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going to give it a 9.1. We really fucking enjoyed that show. It was We walked out of there like, whoa, that was a great show. If you want to go out, and it, I was going to say take a trip down memory lane, and yeah, you'll do that, but it's more than that. It's it's just really good music, and that, that genre of music makes you feel good. And the way he is and the way he sings, and he doesn't take himself too seriously anymore. It was a really good show. We really, really enjoyed it. So for that, 9.1 out of 10. And that's the review. Thanks for listening. Subscribe and comment if you've ever seen them. I want to know what you think. Uh, And that's it. I'll see you at the next show. Thanks. Bye-bye.